Hello everybody and welcome back to The Legend of Zelda Phantom Hourglass. I'm Zelda Master and well in the previous episode we explored a bunch of islands and got ourselves a couple of cool stuff. Uh, two of them being the Cyclone Slay and the Fishing Rod. Now we can't use the Fishing Rod now because we have to be uh, on top of a fish shadow when, when we're in the sea. Kind of like this one over here. Um, and for the Cyclone Slay, we can't really do anything with that yet until we find uh, some golden frogs that will show us a couple drawings that we can draw and we can teleport around the Great Sea and stuff like that. But I'll get into that in a bit. For now, I want to show you guys this traveler ship here. Now, I'm going to try to actually like um, go around him. Wait, I, I didn't mean to open up the map. I meant like this. Let's go ahead and hit route and let's go around the ship. And we'll just observe it for a little bit. If you look closely at the ship, I'm not close enough to really see it that well. And there's an enemy interrupting this. Die, please. Thank you. Alright, let's go ahead and uh, head to the ship now that we're in front of it. But if we start to approach, approach uh, this ship, we'll notice that it looks like the King of Red Lions. Just, um just bigger like a lot bigger but yeah let's go ahead and board this trip I guess and see what's on it um so this is gonna be pretty interesting it's actually kind of hilarious how there's this guy on it yeah he's he's dressed up like us and if we talk to him let's go ahead and say hi hmm say I can't help but notice you're dressed exactly like me are you a fan of mine uh what? I, I think you're a fan of us, dude. I don't know what you're talking about. Don't get me wrong, it doesn't surprise me in the least to meet a fan. I travel the world with my Prince of Red Lion ship. <laughs> Prince. It's not King of Red Lions, apparently, so this must be the King's son, and, and, and that's his ship, apparently. He saves the world from evil things, and I'm what you would call a hero. Do you want my autograph? I, 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 think, I think you should be asking me that, sir, because... Because I'm the hero? I mean, yeah, I might not have my items or anything to show that I did rescue Hyrule uh, before in my Wind Waker quest. But I am the hero of Wind, technically, because this is the same link. So, yeah. Um, a little weird. I'm going to tell him no thanks. But you have to tell him yes to continue on. Basically, this guy's going to give you a pretty cool side questing item. And, uh, yeah, we're just going to have to deal with him acting like us and we're gonna pretend we're a fan and try to learn from him so yeah we're dressed similar he has a heart on his belt though it's kind of hilarious he has a pitchfork not even a sword and then he has like a green um hat with like a fluff at the end so it doesn't even fit links but anyways um so yeah there's lots to learn whatever very good so it's decided what's your name kid link huh okay so we're the hero's apprentice Mhm. Wait, I wonder what his name is then, because the hero is Link, right? So, I guess, apparently, apparently he goes by a different name. Maybe he didn't know the hero's name, he just calls him a hero. But anyways, if we go in and talk to him, um, he's going to ask if we want to train the the way of the swordsmanship. And if we tell him yes, we have to hit him a couple times. As you can tell, Link is extremely strong. One whack and he's done for. Um, so, basically, in the long run, what we're going to be doing, if we go ahead and hit him a couple more times... Uh, yeah, yeah, that's it. Okay, so he gives up. He is gonna, he's gonna say that's enough for the day. So we're gonna have to come back later on and, and continue this, basically. And we got ourselves a small piece of treasure for doing this. I believe that was a Helmarok feather? Wait, really? I, I think so. Let's go ahead and check our collections. If we go ahead and head over to, oops, menu and go to collection. Wow, I'm like blind. I can't see it. And I believe if we do this treasure we can see what it is oh so it's a helmarok plum okay a plume rather um looks pretty cool honestly but anyways uh i i guess that's pretty much it so we're gonna go ahead and leave and essentially what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be training this guy apparently he's supposed to train us at least that's what he wants to do so what we need to do is go ahead and and sword train with him and once he gets exhausted and that we have to leave the ship and reboard the ship afterwards. And that's basically like time passed. Okay, so we only took one ho one sword slash for this one. And we get ourselves the Rudo Crown. Alright, let's go ahead and leave again. So, yeah, you just gotta do this back and forth. It's, it's a little, uh, 
little redundant, but whatever. You know, we're gonna do it, and uh, you know, we should be rewarded with something pretty special. So in the long run, it's pretty worth it. So I believe right now he's gonna want to do the final training. I'm not entirely sure if it's like three to four times, but let's see. Let's go ahead and try to hit him. Okay, that's it. Well, <laughs> all right. So I believe after this. This is gonna be the final time, hopefully, I think. I'm, I'm not entirely sure, but, you know, let's hope. Because, yeah, this takes a lot of time to really get to, so let's go ahead and board the ship once again, and see if he's ready to actually, you know, train us for a little bit. Um, so let's say yes. As you can tell, he's not even improving. Like, we hit him once and he gives up, but now I think he's ready. Yeah, there we go. Now we're supposed to attack him a uh, hundred times, and we have three hits. If he hits us three times, we lose. So, uh, it's not, it's not that hard, actually. You just have to make sure when he comes to, like, twist his, uh, pitchfork to move, or, or he'll do that as well. I might actually fail here, um, it looks like, but I think I'll, I think I'll be okay. Sometimes he doesn't, like, do it without warning, because you're just supposed to spin it around like that, and then you avoid it. So I only hit him, uh, 35 times. This is generally really easy, but I guess because I am commentating, and I'm going to use that as an excuse, yes, because I'm commentating, it's a lot harder, guys. <laughs> no, but seriously, this is really easy, so I'm going to try it again without really fast-forwarding or skipping anything, because I know I can do this. So, let's try to hit him 100 times. You only need to hit him 100 times. This is similar to the Orca piece of heart in uh, the Wind Waker, where you have to hit him, like, a, uh, a bunch of times, and you have, like, three hits. If he hits you three times, you lose, but you have to hit him 500 times. And I'm, like, reacting really slow. Basically, what you want to do is once he starts spinning it, like this, you want to move and dodge the uh, hit like that. Um, so, yeah, it's not that hard, basically. But since I'm, like, multitasking, it's a little difficult. And now I only have one hit left. I better do this. Uh, I'm pretty sure I can. Just got to come on, pay attention. All right, just use it. Hit me. Okay. Uh, okay, we're good. <laughs> All right, we're almost there, guys. We're almost there. We got this. No! Okay, whew. All right, I think he's only gonna try to do it one more time and he'll be down. All right, let's just let him do that. And try to attack him. This is like huge for the King of Red Lions ship, or the Prince of Red Lions, rather. So his son's a lot bigger than him! Crap! And of course, as soon as I stop talking, uh, I do this with ease. So, yeah. Um, basically, all you need to do is pass 100. But I'm just going to keep hitting him to see how much I can get. Uh, actually, no, let's just let him end it. So hit me. Go ahead. There we go. And that's it. So 121. Remarkable. Here, put your hands out. And we get ourselves a heart container. Now, you may be questioning. Wait, a heart container? I thought you would have got a heart piece because it's a side quest item. You know, it's not from like a boss or anything. Well, in this game, you only collect heart containers. You don't collect pieces of heart at all. So you don't collect four pieces of heart to assemble a heart container. They just give you a heart container immediately. Um, so that kind of tells you that there's not as many pieces of heart within the game to collect. It makes it a lot easier, a lot faster. Um, and it's kind of similar to A Link to the Past. In A Link to the Past, it was kind of like the same ordeal where you collect heart containers instead of heart pieces, unlike the... Uh, other Zelda games, but yeah, um, there we go. So we got ourselves a heart container from this, and that's pretty much it. I believe you can get yourself treasure um, if you keep hitting it more than a hundred times and stuff. But I don't really need that treasure or anything. So yeah, now it's time to head back to uh, Mercay Island and head to uh, the Temple of the Ocean King and find the next clue. Now that we have the Spirit of Wisdom. Uh, with us on our side. So, now, you know how I X'd out this whole area on the bottom of the uh, sea chart? Well, um, we couldn't go there before um, we went through the other path that was that was here. First, we had to go through this uh, secret path that the, uh, the old wafer put. And once you do that and pass the flag, I don't want to board this ship, um, it will allow you to head through this path. And basically, if you did try to head through here, as you can tell, nothing's really blocking it. There would have been cyclones pushing you all the way back. So, they want you to head through the specific route first before the cyclones clear up and stuff. So, yeah, good timing, right? As soon as we actually make it to that side of the ocean, the cyclones automatically clear up. But obviously, that's the point of the game, so I'm not going to question it, you know. But anywho, let's go ahead and make our way to uh, Mercury Island, like I just said, and do what we plan on doing. Now, if we head back to, uh, I believe actually, you know, I'm just going to do it because I can. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and make our way all the way to the Isle of Ember, just before I forget. 
And if we talk to Astrid, she will actually give us a uh, spirit gem. We just have to tell her that we saved the next spirit. So, I mean, if you want an easy spirit gem, and I believe it's the wisdom gem, you can get one. And I want to do it now before I forget. So, let's go ahead and do that. So, I'll meet you guys when we're at the Isle of Ember. Okay, so we have arrived to the Isle of Ember. And our first course of action is to talk to Astrid. I could check my mail, but... You know, I'd rather not right now. Let's go ahead and uh, have, I guess, Astrid, uh, yeah, look look into our uh, fortune and, and stuff. So, gaze into the crystal ball and see what we've done and stuff. So, I see it now, your future. All right, listen, will your heart still speak, blah, blah, blah. You rescued the Spirit of Wisdom. Please take this. All right. <laughs> So we get ourselves a Wisdom Gem. It really fits the mood of rescuing the Spirit of Wisdom. Aw, yeah. Now, what we want to do is head back to the Great Sea and head to the Murky Island like I wanted to do. And as I said, like, several times already. But there's something pretty cool we're going to find while heading back. While heading to this island, I spotted it. But I kind of want to show it off while heading back. Just, just so you guys can see exactly what it is. So, um, you, kn you know the Cyclone Slate we got? Yeah, we're going to actually use that. Um... And you'll see how it works because right now we can't really do anything with it. Basically, you're supposed to draw a certain thing on it, um, and yeah. So around this area, like in between, I believe, like Cannon Island to Murke Island, if you look closely, you should find a golden frog. Now we've seen several of these throughout the map, throughout the Great Sea in general, um, and you actually want to hit him with your cannon once you get the Cyclone Slate, and you'll actually be able to hit him with it. So. Let's go ahead and try to pay attention. There he is. Okay, so I'm going to stop and try to hit him. If he'll let me. Um, come on. Really? Alright, let's just wait. Let's let him, like, spin around. Okay, I think we got him. What the frick? This is... Okay, it's a lot harder than I thought it would be. You want to hit him before he starts swimming away, usually. Uh. Uh, okay. Seriously, why can't I hit him? What the frick? He's... Ah. Okay, one second. I'm gonna go ahead and head to Cannon Island, um, so it can respawn. Because basically, if it swims away, it doesn't appear unless you land on an island and come back. Or, I, okay, wait, I was wrong. I'm I'm glad we've seen this. So it comes back. Luckily, you want to hit it. If how is this so freaking hard? I don't understand. There we go. Finally, holy crap. Okay, so dots. Oof, nice shot, buddy. Um, yeah, nice shot. Thanks. It took us at least 1,000 million tries, but whatever. So, uh, we got a certain thing that we can draw on the cycling slate. He's going to show us. So, here goes, pal. Pay attention. And there you go. That's the mark. If we draw this mark on the cycling slate, we will teleport to where this frog is. So, just draw it where the frog icon is near on your C chart, and you'll remember. It's really that easy. So, yeah, we got that down. And that's basically how you do it. I believe if you didn't jot it down on your C chart, you can easily hit the frog again and he'll he'll show you the symbol. I'm not entirely sure, but I'm pretty sure that's how it works. So, yeah, we're able to head here anytime we want now. Um, it doesn't matter which part of the sea we're on. As long as we're on a ship, we go ahead and open up our slate and just draw. Now, I'm not going to draw it because I want to head to Murakai Island. So, yeah, but it'll come in handy later on. Come in handy. Come come in use later on. Alright, so here we are on Murky Island. Let's go ahead and actually do things for once. Now, <laughs> been uh, stalling a lot this episode, but there's a couple things I want to do, and um, obviously the main thing is, you know, heading to the Temple of the Ocean King, but there's also something else we can do before heading to the Temple of the Ocean King and investigating uh, the, the next area, um, and that is, well, first thing I want to do actually is blow up this, so we have like a nice shortcut. We don't have to head up that other side. I don't know why I didn't blow both of the rocks at the same time, but whatever. Let's go ahead and just do that. There we go. Reset. And this. Yes, there is a crack on the wall. Now that we have the bombs, we can easily open up and, and head inside of it and really see what's in here. So let's go ahead and hit this uh, gossip stone and see what it has to give us. So boing. Uh, there are fallen slumber. F. Three fallen adventurers slumber forever within the Temple of the Ocean Kings. They may have fallen, but they can... But you can seek their advice on to survive the temple. Okay. Couldn't read that for crap. <laughs> I'm pretty stupid. Um, but yeah, basically what it's saying is uh, the, the skeletons you find in the Temple of the Ocean King usually have advice. 
because there's like spirits right by it so if you talk to them they'll give you something pretty interesting but I don't really need that um I remember the first time I played this game I actually like talked to every single one and like tried to get as much advice as I possibly can and that's kind of why I have the Temple of the Oji King down to heart like I really know this place pretty darn well but anyways we are back here in the Temple of the Ocean King and we should have an extra two minutes in our Phantom Hourglass um, because you know we, we got it from defeating the boss that was in uh, the Temple of Wind so let's go ahead and get started so we got an extra two minutes as you can tell you'll notice right now that everything resets yeah your progress doesn't save that's how it works your Phantom Hourglass resets and all of your progress. So you may say, what? I have to go through the whole thing and blah, 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 blah. Well, every item you get in every temple when, when you come to return to the Temple of the Ocean King, you can find easy shortcuts to do this. As you can tell, I just blew up those rocks that we couldn't blow up before in our first uh, adventure here. And now I got ourselves a small key with these. So, yeah, I mean, I understand why people, like, have a grudge <laughs> against this game because of the, um... Because of the Temple of the Ocean King, but but they give you a lot of advantages, and if you take it, it's easy. Look, okay, this room I can solve within like two seconds. Go ahead and place a bomb here. Wait a couple seconds. Let it explode. Head here, and there you go. You can get the key just like that, but actually, you can't get the key just like that. I need to actually have the key appear. My bad. Okay, let's go ahead and do this. I believe we just need to pull the switch, and uh, let's see if we go ahead and hit this switch. The key will appear. Okay. So it's a little bit longer. Actually, that would have been way too easy if it was just like, you know, blow up the wall and grab the key and you head to the next floor. You know, there's a little more to it. But in general, as you could tell, we're going to be cutting off a lot of time with the extra time we currently have. So it's not that big of a deal, you know? To me, it's like freaking awesome. So I'm going to grab this and throw it and then just run behind him just like that because I can do that. Go ahead and hit this, and well, now it's time to head to the final room that we've explored here in the Temple of the Ocean King. Then we're going to have access to even more rooms. And believe it or not, this room is also going to be pretty easy. Um, so, yeah. Alright, so I believe the first thing we want to do is actually head around here. Alright. Try to avoid these spikes because they hurt, believe it or not. <laughs> so let's go ahead and, oops, dig this. And, come on. Okay, there we go. You'll find gust blowing out of it. Go ahead and hit this. Ah, uh, we're good. I believe... Can we hit this? No, he's not gonna notice. Whatever. We'll just wait for him. Luckily, there's a red pot we can stand in that will freeze our time. And we're just gonna wait for him to uh, make it to the other side. And then... Let's grab the key. There we go. So we got the key. Um, and I believe... Uh, to have these switches completely move... Uh, we have to, I believe, pull the switch. Let's see what the switch does. No, it moves the fire. So, the uh, the shovel kind of has you skip the whole pulling that l lever thing, um, which isn't really that important. I'm looking for something else. I think it's this. Let's go ahead and and hit this. Let's see what this does. Yeah. Okay. So it stops the spikes. Nice. That's pretty much what I wanted to do because I don't want to get hurt because I believe the spikes take like half a heart or a heart. In general, we don't want to get hit by the spikes because we don't have that much HP as it is. So, yeah. But anywho, uh, we're, we're hitting, a, you know, the 10 minute mark here, you know. Uh, but the first time we actually explored the Temple of the Ocean King, we started off with 10 minutes. And here we are pretty much at the end of uh, our first adventure here in the Temple of the Ocean King. So, yeah, it's going by pretty fast. Um, so you don't really have to worry about uh, the time. The two minutes to give you is well over the amount you need. Now, uh, let's go ahead and just quickly grab the other two and not waste any more time. There's really nothing else important we can do. Normally, you'd want to kill this other, uh, this other guy, this other phantom, but here's the, here's the thing, guys. Um... The chest it gives us when you kill this phantom isn't isn't accessible now. Like, we'll be able to get it later on. So, yeah. Okay, we got caught, which actually isn't that big of a problem. Let me go ahead and run him around all the way here so it could take him forever. Normally, I would I would try to kill him right now, but I don't really care. I, I, think, I, I think I'm fine. So, let's go ahead and just grab the other chest. And we already have one of the forest gems waiting. Um, by the purple 
area so we're good so we're just gonna go ahead and run around this way and I believe if we stand here and just wait for him to cross by we'll be fine so yeah we're pretty much almost done with this segment um, and we'll be able to explore the rest of the Temple of the Ocean King. Now, of course, we're going to be coming back here and doing these same puzzles on and on. But with the more items we get, the easier this place is going to get. So it gets easier and easier time by time. And you get to cut more puzzles and just generally breeze through it a lot faster. So, yeah. Um, let's go ahead and put this. And there we go. So we're one minute off. Um... And, it, you know, if we did make it on exactly 10 minutes, we would have had, like, a full 10 minutes to explore the new section. But I think we're going to be able to get ourselves an extra 30 seconds in this room. So let's go ahead and... Okay, yeah. I believe uh, Neri is going to come out and let us know that if we touch this door, uh, we can continue on. But I want to go ahead and check. Yep, okay, sweet. There's a 30-second uh, jar here. Basically gives you more sand for your Phantom Hourglass. Not permanently, it just adds up more sand so you get an extra 30 seconds here, which is pretty nice. But, anyways, let's go ahead and get started with the new segment of the Temple of the Ocean King. So here we go. Now, as soon as we uh, exit this door, these new enemies spawn. So, ew! <laughs> Eyeball monsters. So yeah, uh, let me explain. These are Phantom Eyes. So basically, they're, they act as extra eyes for phantoms, but they can't hurt you like phantoms. What they do is, they go crazy like siren, alert the phantoms that you're there, and um, yeah, the phantoms will start chasing you, so they just act as extra eyes like, uh, you know, Neri just told us. And now what we want to do is actually kill these guys, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and hit the switch, I'm going to go ahead and hit this uh, phantom eye, and you can stun him and just kill him, just like that. Um, unlike the Phantoms, the Phantoms have, like, armor and swords and stuff, so you can't really hurt them. But these eyes are just literally flying eyes, so they're really easy to kill. Um, let's go ahead and grab this golden jar, which will give us more time as well. And, uh, yeah, try to continue through this room. Now, if you do get caught by one of these eyes, I believe an extra Phantom is going to appear within, uh, this room. So, I highly suggest not getting caught. It will generally make this place a lot easier for you. So... The way not to get caught by these phantom eyes is literally to crap. Okay, uh, is literally to hit him with your boomerang, stun him, and then kill him. And I already failed. As you can tell, yeah, just siren like went off, and instantly the phantoms are like running around, you know, checking where you are. It's honestly a little frightening, but it can be done. All right, let's go ahead and do this. Ah, yeah. Super stealth action, guys. I really like this, honestly. Like, the Phantom Eyes add more to it because they're a lot more mobile than uh, normal Phantoms. And in general, the consequence isn't nearly as, like, crucial when getting caught by a Phantom Eye rather than a Phantom itself. So, yeah. It's going to open up this chest and get ourselves a Power Gem. So that's why we have to kill all the Phantom Eyes. Not only to make this generally easier, but to... Uh, to get ourselves a power gem as well. Now, all we need left is the key so we can actually advance on and, you know, be done with this room. So, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna wait for this guy to walk by. Wow, he like saw me! Oh man, that was weird. It's like he stood there and he's like, I smell something. And he just looked back and smashed me in the face. Man, <laughs> okay. It's okay though. The bomb still exploded! <laughs> I'll, t I'll take that. Ah, crap. Alright, let's see. I, I believe we'll be safe here if we hit the switch. No, we're not, no, we're not, no, we're not, no, we're not. I need the Superman theme, the Superstar theme. I feel a lot more comfortable with this playing because I feel invincible, guys. Alright. <laughs> and there we go. We got ourselves a small key. And now we can advance onwards. So, hey, Phantom, how are you doing? Open the door! Ah, crap. Now, now I'm just wasting a lot of time here because I'm getting a little cocky. And stuff but I don't really care I just want to like finish this as soon as possible so yeah ah oh, man he caught me again whatever I don't think he can chase me that far yeah we're, we're already um, gonna exit this room so that does that uh, it's a lot more difficult with two phantoms but I got caught so I deserved it so yeah anyways this room as you can tell literally has no phantoms at all nor phantomized this room is actually extremely simple what we want to do Wait, is not get hit by that, not get hit by this either. Okay, be careful because I'm getting low on HP. We want to hit the switch, which will activate this, 
and that these uh, spikes to stop, you know, attacking us. And we can go ahead and grab ourselves some, I please tell me there's hearts in here. Come on, this okay, well there's 30 seconds, oh, and some hearts, thank god, okay. And we can continue, as you can tell there's a weird eye over here that we can't really do anything to, because we don't have the item for it, but later on, um, like I said, because we're going to come back here again several times, we're going to be able to figure out this this, this problem. Um, but anyways, so let's go ahead and continue on by killing these two dudes to die. And, uh, yeah. So far, it's so good, really. I got hit twice, and, and I still think I'll make it um, in a decent amount of time, honestly. I'm not too scared, because they're giving us a lot of these golden pots that have uh, extra seconds. Some are 15, some are 30. Would have would have liked it to be thirty, but whatever. Not not gonna complain. I deserve uh you know the less time because I got hit several times. So yeah. Anyways, we went ahead and killed these mini blends, and now we can advance. So this room is just filled with you know casual enemies defeating them to continue on. So it's more like a temple, like a casual temple, I guess you could say, rather than the temple of the Ocean King, which is completely different, where you can't really kill anything. You're just hiding. Um, but yeah, okay, so I believe we hit the switch, we can advance here, and a chest will appear. Ooh, let's see what's inside this chest. Got ourselves a red potion! Awesome! Items, yay! So as you can tell, you don't actually collect, uh, pots in this game. Like, um, bottles. What you do is, uh, you just buy two potions. You only can hold up to two potions. You just have, like, two potion slots that you can use whenever, um... And yeah, this is going to help us out a lot because potions are great and, uh, crap. Okay, we're good. As long as we stand here, we're fine. They can't really see us, so just sit and buzz for a little bit longer. But yeah, let's go ahead and read this, uh, you know, uh, what's it called? Slate here. So, before lies the second tablet, um, governing the crest. Okay, let's go ahead and, I guess, put two here because it said second. And basically what you want to do is do what I'm doing right now, kind of like, you know, keep track and you know write these down so this is the uh, forest stone no there are four okay so it's telling you there are four stone tablets uh, that govern the crest okay so that stone or that uh, thing really has nothing to do with anything it's just letting you know that there are these uh, stone tablets that will give you a certain thing for a certain puzzle so let's see what this one is this is the fourth one so we're gonna go ahead and put four here so this room can can be completed really easily if you're able to do this uh, fast enough. As you can tell, there's this weird um, curtain kind of thing right there. Oh, oh crap. Um, I think I'm dead. Wait. Come on, explode, 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 explode. Get off of me. Oh, yeah, and if they grab onto you, they'll slow you down. Like, ah! Okay, I'm sorry. That, that was really scary. <laughs> Might have yelled a little too loud. <laughs> You're running really fast, guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, before lies the third. All right, we're going to put three here. But, yeah, basically what we want to do is solve this small puzzle. Then we'll be able to, to understand what the curtain's really telling you. Um, but, geez. Okay, so this one you don't actually want to click. I'm going to click it for you guys. So, before I use the cursed tablet, it brings a ruin upon all who gaze upon it. Okay, so, yeah, now another one appeared. Um... So that's a bad one. Two of them appeared, actually. But, I thought I'd show it just for showing, really, and, and letting you know what, what the curse really is. It's not really that big of a consequence if you if you plan on breathing through this really fast. But, in general, it, it kind of sucks, let's be honest. Alright, let's go and try to snipe this guy. <laughs> Alright, we're good. There's a phantom also lurking in this department. Okay, you know, he's leaving. Um, let's go ahead and place this here. Grab a bomb. What you want to do is throw it after the wind stops blowing. Reason being is because the the current of wind that shoots up doesn't last as long as the bomber, the bomb timer takes to actually explode. So, yeah, anyways, here's the final uh, tablet. Let's go ahead and read it. So, the sacred crest both begins and ends with me. So, this is number one and five. So... We're going to go ahead and put 1x5. I don't know why, but whatever. So n now we know the, the secret pattern. We, we've we checked every single uh, crest thing, and, and basically we know what to do. Now, all we need to do is just step on this, run over here, screw the phantom, screw everything. We got what we need from this room, so we're set. We're done, basically. If we go ahead and click uh, 
this, you know, weird thing. Um, it says, in a single stroke, draw the sacred crest to reveal the new path. Now, you want to draw in this exact order. Basically, what it wants you to do is draw a phantom hourglass figure, like an hourglass figure. So, um, yeah, as you can tell, if you go ahead and do the way it shows on the map. So, we start from here, from all the way up here, head to two, go down to three, to four, and guess what? Yes, it ends with the same one that we started in. And will you look at that? It's all you need to do. You have to do in this order though, because if you don't, it won't really recognize what you did, and yeah, it's, it's kind of complicated, I guess. Um, so that's why you need to read all of those tablets and stuff. But anyways, we want to get ourselves some time that we don't really need, and <gasps> what's that? A weird sunstone thing. So if you go ahead and uh, press the sacred crest against the sea chart to transfer it. Now this is kind of funny. Um, <laughs> basically, this area will show us the sun key, but if you look on the map that it shows you, it's resembling something. Yeah, it's resembling this part of the sea, um, but it's reversed. So what are we going to do? We're actually going to close our 3DS, so just like that, and then open it. And what do you know, the, the freaking stamp transferred to the sea chart, and now we know where to go. Um, the first time I did this, it took me forever to figure out. I'm like, what am I supposed to do? Like, they should have told you. They should have just broke the fourth wall and said, shut your 3DS screen. Because why would a game request something like that? I don't know. To me, it just seemed really far-fetched. And I was just like, there's no way someone would just think, oh, I should shut my 3DS screen. But you have to do that. And that's how you continue on. So there we go. Um... I had to shut my 3DS screen, but or DS screen it really depends what kind of system you have, of course. Wait, I wonder if you have a 2DS. How would you do that if you have a 2DS? Holy crap, that is mind blown. Because I'm pretty sure the 2DS also plays um, DS games. That is hilarious. I bet you can't do it because you have to shut it unless there's like a standby mode, like a button that you can click to go on standby, and that considers shutting the screen. I don't know. If you have a 2DS and play this game, let me know uh, what it could be, because I'm actually curious. But that's basically how you were supposed to do it, and I guess that does that for, for this episode. So uh, thank you all very much for watching. In the next episode, we're going to see what this weird crest that we put on our city chart really is, and just generally investigate um, and continue on with the story. So yeah, I've been Zelda Master. Thank you all very much for watching this episode of The Legend of Zelda Phantom Hourglass, and I'll see you all in the next one. Goodbye.